hello, in this problem we are going to find the domain of this function. We have f of x equal to the square root of all of this stuff here. So x over 2x minus 1 minus 1. And so by the domain, we basically mean the set of all values of x, for which when we plug in those values of x into our function, it makes sense. So what does it mean to make sense? Well, in our case, it basically means you can't divide by 0, and you're not allowed to have negative numbers inside the square root. So right away we see that there's an issue here with the 2x minus 1. Because if this piece is equal to 0, then we're going to end up dividing by 0. So first let's try to find out when this is equal to 0. We can do that by setting this equal to 0 and basically solving for x. This will tell us the value of x that we can't plug in for this function, at least one of the values. So this is pretty easy to solve. We just add 1 to both sides. So we get 2x equal to 1. And then we can just divide by 2. So we get x equals 1 half. So x cannot be equal to 1 half. That's one of our conditions, right? Because if x is 1 half, basically you get 2 times 1 half minus 1, which is 1 minus 1, which is 0. So you end up getting 0 here on the bottom which is bad, right? You can't divide by zero. So now that we've dealt with that, the only thing we have to deal with is the square root. And again, recall, whenever you have a square root, you can't have negatives inside it. So in general, if you have like the square root of u, then u needs to be greater than or equal to zero. That's really key. So here, you can think of your u as this entire piece here. So basically, we need all values of x besides this one for which this is greater than or equal to zero. So now we're gonna solve an inequality. We're basically gonna take everything in our square root, so x over 2x minus one, minus one, and we're gonna set it greater than or equal to zero. Again, think of this as your u if you're confused. This is your u, whoops, I have a little dash there, let me fix that. So u is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so to solve this inequality, um, we're going to use what's called the test point method. That basically means that we want zero on one side, which we already have, and a single term on the other. So let's go ahead and like perform the subtraction here. So this is x over 2x minus 1. And in order to subtract these, we need to write 1 as a number over 2x minus 1. So the easy way to do that is to write it like this, 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 1. And this should be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so now we can subtract, and we have to be really careful here because there's two terms here. So I'm going to put this in parentheses and write it like this. This is x minus parentheses 2x minus 1. And all of this is being divided by 2x minus 1. And this is greater than or equal to zero. Good stuff. Now, there's an implied one here. And so now we're going to distribute. I'm just going to come up here to save some room. If x minus 2x, so x minus 2x, and then minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. All of this is over, and then 2x minus 1, and that's greater than or equal to 0. And we can keep going because there's really a 1 here, so when you subtract these, you're just going to get 1x minus 2x which is negative 1x, which is just negative x. So it's negative x plus 1 over 2x minus 1, and that's greater than or equal to 0. All right, and again, I think I mentioned already, we're going to use something called the test point method. So that requires having a single you know, term on one side and 0 on the other. So we're there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set each piece equal to 0. Okay, And again, I'm going to write down the name of this method so that there's no confusion that we're doing an algebraic process here. So this is called the test point method. This is a basic method that's taught in at least most modern algebra books will teach this. So basically you take each piece and set it equal to zero. So we have negative x plus one equal to zero. And then the bottom piece two x minus one equal to zero. All right, and then you solve each of these for x. This one's pretty easy. You subtract 1, and then divide or multiply by negative 1, so we get 1. This one we've already solved before. You add 1, divide by 2, 
So we get x equals 1 half. So then what you do with the test point method is you take your answers that you just got and you put them on a number line. So I'm going to put the 1 half here because it comes before 1. And I'll put the 1 here. And then you pick test points and you plug them into your inequality, which is up here. If it's true, you shade. If it's not true, you don't shade. So let's go ahead and start picking numbers. I'm going to pick a number that's over here. You can pick any number you like as long as it's smaller than 1 half. So let's check 0. That's a really easy number to check. So you put the 0 here where the x is. So it'll be negative 0 plus 1 over 2 times 0 minus 1. So that should be greater than or equal to 0. So that's going to be 1 over negative 1 greater than or equal to 0. No, epic fail, right? So we don't shade here at all. So no shading is done there. Let's check a number between 1 half and 1. That's going to be a little bit annoying, but we could do it. We got this. Let's do, hmm, how about 3 fourths? So checking 3 fourths, we're going to put it here. So we get negative 3 fourths plus 1 over 2 times 3 fourths minus 1. And we want to see if that's greater than or equal to 0. Negative 3 fourths plus 1 is 1 fourth over, I'm going to put this in parentheses, and then 2 times 3 fourths, that's going to be 3 halves. So it's 3 halves minus 1. And that should be greater than or equal to 0. And it is, I'll show an extra step, this is 1 fourth over 3 halves minus 1 is really 3 halves minus 2 halves, which is 1 half. Hey, look, that's greater than or equal to 0. You don't need to keep going. You just need to know if it's greater than or equal to 0. And it is, so we can rejoice, so we can shade here in between the 1 half and the 1. Finally, we need to check a number bigger than 1. Let's go ahead and check 2. And I'm running out of room, so I'm going to write down the inequality again over here. It was negative x plus 1 over 2x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. And now we're going to check 2 because that's an easy one to check. So check 2. So negative 2 plus 1 over, and then we have 2 times 2 minus 1. So that should be greater than or equal to 0. So this will be negative 1 over 4 minus 1, which is 3. And that should be greater than or equal to 0, but it's not a huge fail, so we don't shade. So now the only thing to consider is whether or not we include the 1 half and the 1. We know we don't include the 1 half uh, for two reasons. So one, we knew right away from the beginning of the problem uh, there was an issue with the 1 half. That's the first thing we took care of when we saw this problem because it was so obvious. So x is not 1 half. Also, if you look here at this inequality, 1 half will also not work here because if you plug in 1 half, you're going to get 0 down here in this inequality. So 1 half is definitely a no. So we use a parentheses because we don't include it. And now we have to check 1. So plugging in 1 in here, we get negative 1 plus 1 over 2 times 1, 1 minus 1. <laughs> I almost messed up. So I almost put a negative there. It's, it's like a funny looking 1. This is going to be 0 over 2 times 1 is 2, so 2 minus 1 is 1. That's true, right? Because 0 is greater than or equal to 0. In particular, it's equal to 0. So yes. So we do include the 1. So that means we use a bracket on the 1. So the final answer to this problem is going to be straight from the picture, parentheses 1 half, comma 1 with the bracket. So kind of a long problem, um, just requires a, a bit of work, but that's how you do it. I hope this video has helped someone out there who is trying to learn some mathematics. Until next time, good luck and take care.